Hello everyone, I'm Lola Rey from Crowdfield uh, University and I'm going to present an overview of the work we've been doing in agriculture for the Marius project but also historic routes. Um, as Ian just mentioned, one of the first things we wanted to do is to try to understand what is the value of water for agriculture. So essentially what we were trying to achieve is what would be the extra benefits that irrigators are getting from irrigating their crops in a dry year in comparison with uh, rain-fed agriculture. And our results show that yeah, agriculture is a highly unproductive use of water and the total on-farm benefits in a dry year could be higher than 660 million pounds. <coughs> And we are only talking here about the farm level, but if you think about the wider food supply chain and the whole economy, the economic benefits of irrigation are even bigger. So that's something that we need to remember when we are thinking about those trade-offs and uh, water availability during droughts. Also, as this project is about risk and uncertainties, we were trying to understand what would be the future water availability risks for agriculture. So basically, if you are an irrigator and there is a dry year, you might not be able to irrigate your crops properly, either because uh, the Environment Agency imposes uh, Section 57 restrictions, so you cannot extract water for a period of time, or because your license is not big enough and it's a very dry year and you don't have enough water to irrigate the crops. Um, so, well, this map is showing the comparison between the baseline period and the future about the probability of being under abstraction restrictions. And it's quite interesting to see the, uh, the spatial pattern. So, uh, according to our results, the probability of being under restrictions could be higher in the west part of the, of the country. And we believe this is due to uh, soil and hydrology conditions in those catchments. So um, what we are trying to do now is to repeat this, this analysis with the event set produced um, for the Marish project by our colleagues and trying to understand in economic terms what this increase in risk will mean for farmers. Uh, so we all know that droughts are a very important <coughs> risk and it ha they have a big impact on agriculture and that in the future uh, droughts might become more frequent and more severe and of course farmers know that as well. So we've been talking to, uh, to uh, farmers in the Anglian region where irrigated agriculture is mainly concentrated and since the last drought in 2010-2012, they have done a lot of um, things. They have implemented a lot of coping strategies to become more resilient to droughts. So most of them have invested in alternative water sources. And one of the main things that they have done is to invest in on-farm reservoirs. So they can pump water out of the river during the winter and use that during the summer if they need to. But there are many other things that, that they are doing at the moment. And also, according to our results, one thing that is very important to remember is that when we are talking about drought management in agriculture, it's not important only what is happening at the farm level, but also how farmers get together in water extractor group, in different associations, and how they engage with the regulator. And according to the people that we interviewed in the Anglian region, um, the relationship between the environment agency and the, um, and the farmers uh, is uh, much better now than it was, for instance, in the 75 76 drought. So they try to uh, talk to each other in advance and try to reduce the impacts of uh, droughts for the environment and also the agricultural sector. <coughs> And finally, some of the, of the things we are doing now is trying to understand better the drought impacts and vulnerability for the different regions. So here we are working with historical uh, um, reported <coughs> impacts uh, for the agricultural sector, so rain-fed and irrigated agriculture, but also livestock. So what this graph is showing is the probability of having an impact ba based on those historical records, depending on the severity of the drought. So we have here a drought indicator, the standard precipitation and evapotranspiration index. And one well, important thing about these two graphs is that although we, be we <coughs> tend to believe that uh, droughts are mostly concentrated or mostly affecting the east and the south of the country, that the probability of impacts for uh, the agricultural sector are also <coughs> higher in the north uh, of the country. So this is looking at, well, this uh, assessment was done at the UK level. 
So to, uh, to finish, uh, agriculture is a high value use of water and water availability channels are going to become greater in the future, so this sector needs its fair share of water. Uh, irrigated agriculture and the supply chains are, going, is be, are becoming more resilient to droughts and we uh, need to remember that drought isn't just an issue for agriculture in the southeast of England. And just uh, a final comment, uh, we are um, going to be working on droughts and agriculture a bit more thanks to the Endows project, trying to consolidate all the agriculture work that has been done across the UK Drought and Water Scarcity Program and uh, try to develop a water strategy for the agricultural sector and develop tools and decision-making uh, systems that could be useful for the agricultural sector. And finally, an uh, impact policy activity that we are going to do uh, in trying to assess the, um, the um, potential of more sophisticated water trading mechanisms as part of the extraction reform. So, thank you.